Hello and welcome to another Orbiter video. In this video I'm picking up where I left off in the last series I recorded, which was the transfer from the ISS out to the moon and then landing at Brighton Beach. So I did a quick save at the end of that scenario, so we're just going to pick up right here. And what I thought I would do this time would be to uh, lift up off the landing pad here at Brighton Beach, get into orbit, and we have a, a space station in orbit around the moon called Luna-OB1, I think is the name of it. So we're going to try to rendezvous with that space station and dock with it. That will present some interesting challenges because that the Luna wheel spins uh, constantly, so as you're trying to dock with it, you need to match the rotational frequency of the of the Luna wheel in order to dock with it. I don't think you technically have to do that. I think the way the docking mechanism works in Orbiter is that well, I know for sure you can dock um, any which way you want, upside down or sideways. So I'm pretty sure with the Luna wheel you can dock with it even if you don't match the rotational frequency. But we're gonna try to we're gonna try to match that rotation um, because that does present a new challenge and it'll give me a chance to you know practice some things that I haven't practiced in a long time. So with that said, let's go ahead and switch camera views and jump right into it. Let me unpause the simulation. Welcome aboard, Commander. All and um, I, I hear I hear that dinging and it reminds me of something I wanted to say. In one of my early videos, I mentioned that uh, you know I was annoyed by the the air traffic control sound that I kept hearing. I really didn't say that the right way. It wasn't that it that it wasn't that the fact that it existed annoyed me because I think it's actually a cool feature. It was just that while I'm trying to record a video and I'm trying to commentate, having these people talk in my head um, was very distracting. And also, I had the audio levels adjusted differently from the from the video versus what I actually have here in my ears. So the ATC sounds that were coming into my ears were really loud. And when I listened back to the video playback, you guys could barely hear it. So you might have been wondering, like, what was the big deal? But in my ears, it was really loud. Um, I did go back and disable those, so no issue there. But now I'm hearing that ping sound in my head. And I think we can turn that off. I think we have to go to um, ComNav. And I think if we disable... Uh, I can't remember which one of these it is that's causing that that ping sound, but I think it's either NAV3 or NAV4. So if we just change the frequency here to like off frequency, I'm still hearing it. So maybe it was the other one, or maybe it's both of them. Okay, that seems to have gotten rid of it. So by changing NAV3 and NAV4 off frequency, I've got rid of that pinging sound. Okay, so let's take a look at the Luna wheel on orbit MFD. So we're here at the moon, so let's target the spacecraft Luna. And let's change our projection to the ship and let's change our distant readout, distance readout to PEA APA. So we can see that the Luna wheel is in uh, it's a pretty pretty much an elliptical orbit. There's very little variance between its periapsis and apoapsis. So it's at an altitude of 500 kilometers, so maybe we'll keep that in mind when we're getting up off the ground and getting into orbit. We'll try to target, um, let's let's say 350 kilometers will be our target. That way we're below the, the Luna wheel and we'll, um, and we won't, but we won't be so far below it that when we arrive we'll have a huge uh, velocity difference. So for example, if we got into orbit around the moon it 30 kilometers, and then we raised one side of our orbit out to 500, we would have a periapsis of 30 kilometers and apoapsis of 500, and that would be a pretty big velocity difference by the time we got there. In fact, we may even want to go for like 425 or something like that, just to kind of minimize that velocity difference when we get there. But we'll worry about that in a minute. Let's bring up map on this side and let's change our display lines to orbit and let's target the um, 
the Luna wheel. And yeah, we can see it has this kind of awkward orbit. Uh, we, let's see, we probably have the information over here. Uh, inclination 90 degrees, so yeah, it's a polar orbit. So let's just kind of warp time forward for a second. All right, so we can see that it's it's orbiting this direction. So, so the first thing we'll do, we'll kind of do what we were doing on Earth. We'll bring up a line plane MFD. We'll target the Luna wheel, and we'll plan to take off when the time to the node is really close to zero. The fact that uh, we're on the moon, we don't have to get nearly as much velocity as we did on Earth, so we don't need 300 seconds or anything like that. I don't know exactly what the time would be, and I don't have Launch MFD installed. It might be able to tell us. But the plan here is going to be to uh, warp time forward until the time to the node is really low, like just 30 seconds or something like that. And then we're going to lift up, rotate to 180 degrees, and head out. So that's the plan. Um, I don't think there's anything more we really need to worry about, so let's go ahead and get that started. Let's turn off uh, AF and uh, warp time forward. So we'll go to 1,000, because it's going to take a while. So let's actually go to 10,000, but let's be careful not to overshoot. But even at 10,000, you can see it's still taking time to get over to us. And once it gets a bit closer, I'm going to zoom in on our location just so I can see things a little bit better. Actually, we probably don't need to worry about that, but let's go down to a thousand at this point. We can see that it's almost at our location. So the time to the node should start counting down here pretty quickly. There it goes. And there it goes now. It's counting down quickly. So we'll go down to a hundred. And now we'll go down to ten. Okay, so now we're 80 seconds or so from the node, so again, I don't know exactly what the right time would be, but I think we have quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of room to here to, to play with. So I'm just going to wait till, you know, I'm, I'm going to say 30 seconds. Actually, let me go a little bit sooner because I still have to get up and rotate, so let me go now. Wheels up. So we're going to raise the landing gear, and we're going to immediately start rotating over to 180. And let me turn on the level horizon. Okay, rotate a bit more. And there we are at 180, so we're going to uh, turn off level horizon, engage the full power of the main engines, uh, turn off all the hover, and pitch our vessel up just a little bit. And we can see our relative inclination coming down, time to the note coming down. And getting into orbit around the moon happens really quickly. Okay, we've passed the time to the node, so we want to maybe start angling a bit. Okay, let me bring up orbit MFD on this side. Should have had that already to go, but... Uh, Hopefully I'm not getting ready to hit a mountain. I feel like I'm rolled a bit. Translation, rotation. Okay, so we're gonna watch just our APA now because uh, I can't pay attention to the relative inclination relative inclination anymore. Too much else is happening. So we're gonna go ahead and go to level horizon. Pretty much level horizon, because we're you know altitudes increasing quickly, APA is increasing quickly. And again, I didn't quite settle on a target at uh, altitude, but uh, let's say, let's pick that now, because we, we know we have to get up to 500. But let's, uh, let's go for at least 400. Okay, we've got a little bit more time here, so let's bank our vessel, or I should say yaw a little bit there just to bring down that relative inclination since we have a little bit more time to think about it. 5,000. Okay, and 
Uh, boy, you get distracted for even a moment and you blow your plan. So you can see our apoapsis is 710. We can fix that now, so we will. But I got, I just looked over at the aligned plane just for a moment. And that out, uh, the, when you get up near orbital velocity, it just goes fast. So we said 400, I think. Translation. So there we go. We messed that up a little bit, but not too terrible overall. So let's switch our HUD over to Orbit HUD. And so the, the first thing that we need to consider when we get up off the ground and are getting into orbit is are we going to stay in orbit? And we can see that our time to the apoapsis, ap, apoapsis is over 3,000 seconds away. So that's uh, way up here somewhere. And our periapsis is, you know, we're going to be in orbit for quite a while before we're going to crash into the ground. But we will crash into the ground if we don't pay attention because our periapsis is still, you know, sublunar. Um, but we can uh, fix the little bit of issue that we're having here with our relative inclination when we get to the node. So that's one thing we can consider doing. But is that going to happen before we get to apoapsis, or is apoapsis going to come first? And it looks like apoapsis is going to get here first by just a little bit. So our plan is going to be to go to uh, the high point of our orbit and circularize. And we'll go ahead and have burn time calculator take care of that for us, trying to get back into the habit of using these tools rather than using, um, you know, just manually doing everything. Manually doing everything is a great idea for the absolute beginner for your first, you know, many flights, a uh, dozen, two dozen, three dozen flights. It's good, good to do everything manually so that you comprehend what's happening and get that ingrained into you but once you once everything is once all the mechanics are understood I think it's time to switch over to tools and I feel like I have all the mechanics pretty well ingrained even after taking this huge hiatus so we're going to go ahead and go to prograde and give the vessel time to settle when it's all settled and let's bring up burn time calculator on the side and if we press the MD button, we switch between uh, time to apoapsis, time to manual start, time to periapsis, and of course we want time to apoapsis. And I'm just going to press the circularize button, and that will instruct burn time calculator to get the information that it needs to carry out an orbital circularization when we reach apoapsis. And you can see that's going to be uh, the, the time to ignition is just 167 seconds away and counting down. And it looks like we're going to have a, just about a five second burn, just slightly less than five seconds. Now, burn time calculator, as far as I know, does not orient the vessel. If that's changed, then I'm unaware of it. But I have the vessel in prograde position, so I don't have to worry about it. And I can just warp time forward. We'll take it a bit slow. And now we're coming up here to the time to ignition in just three, two, one, and circularizing our orbit with that five second burn. And there it is. And you can see our eccentricity is, uh, you know, with three decimals of precision, it's zero. So uh, we are now in a circular orbit below the Luna wheel so we will catch up to it eventually. Uh, in the meanwhile, we can consider taking care of some of our other orbital mechanics if need be, such as the aligned plane. We're only out by 0.03, which isn't much, um, but since we actually are coincidentally coming up to that node here in just you know, a little over uh, 90 seconds, uh, we can take care of it. Using our memory trick, AN equals AN, um, anti-normal equals ascending node or ascending node equals anti-normal and then the other node is just the other direction so that means that we would want to be in the normal plus position however since we're only looking at such a super tiny burn 
uh, we can keep the vessel in this position. And since we know we're going to be thrusting up, we can use linear translation or we could even use the hover engines. But in this case, uh, and the only reason we can use the hover engines is because we're going up. If we were, if we needed to, uh, to translate, or if we needed to put in velocity down, obviously we couldn't use the hover engines. So, but I think with this small amount here, we'll try to correct that little bit with just uh, linear translation. So let's uh, warp time four, just get a bit closer to that time and I'll turn off the prograde autopilot because I don't, I don't think it'll be a problem, but I don't want to have the autopilot trying to fight um, putting in that translation. So we are in linear translation. I can see that here and we want to be thrusting up. So we're going to fire the thrusters from the bottom. So I'm putting in two and we did that pretty much at the right time. And we can see our estimated thrust is zero, but I also like to uh, swing around. Well, I guess uh, we'll just leave it at that. Usually I'll, I'll continue thrusting until that line becomes perpendicular, but in this case, um, it looks like it's where it's at and we have everything just how it needs to be. Okay, so we are, uh, we're now in perfect plane with the Luna for the time being. There is a possibility, of course, that it could slip a little bit. Uh, generally speaking, that won't be the case because I don't have non-spherical gravity sources enabled, but uh, the moon is orbiting the Earth, and there, so there could be some gravitational effects that affect our vessel and affect the Luna wheel in a way that we don't really notice on Earth. So let's... Um, Let's bring up sync orbit now. Now we're not going to worry about trying to synchronize our orbit yet because we, we still have to catch up to the Luna wheel. And we have several orbits to go to do that. But at the very least, we can start putting in the information now. So let's target the wheel. And we don't know yet if we're going to use periapsis or apoapsis. So for now, I'm just going to put in you know ship's apoapsis just to have something in there. And I'm going to change the length. I, I think this can only display 18 or 19, but I think you can put in like any number. Yeah, I don't know if it'll... Yeah, I guess you can't really scroll through this list, but uh, it looks like it'll display 20 orbits total before it goes off the screen. Okay, so our relative inc inclination is zero. So before we worry about where at on the moon we're going to rendezvous with the wheel, I'm first just going to orbit the planet for, well, orbit the moon for a while and just let our delta glider get closer to the wheel. So this green line represents our position. The yellow line represents the Luna wheel. And we're going faster than the wheel, so we're actually going to gain on it a little bit each orbit, but it's going to take quite a few orbits. So let's go out to a thousand. We might even be able to pull 10,000, but I'm always nervous about 10,000. Let's try it for a second. Okay, we're getting away with it, but no more than that. And you can see, you know, we're slowly catching up. And I'm going to say, just get a little bit closer. That's probably maybe a bit closer yet. All right, I'm going to say that as, as close as I want to get before I start planning my next uh, part of the, of, the, of the rendezvous. So let's bring up map. And it looks like, so we're orbiting in this direction. You know, we come down here and this, we quickly zoom across here and then go up. So it looks like when we get down to about that point right there is when we enter into lunar, um, lunar sunrise. And that'll be a good time or, you know, that time or close to that time shortly after will be a good time to rendezvous so that we can simply see what we're doing while we're doing the rendezvous and dock. So I'm going to warp time forward to get over to lunar sunrise and we can see the graphics starting to change. So let's just get around a little bit farther, maybe about right here. And since we have a circular orbit, um, if I put in just a little bit of velocity right at this point that I'm at, it's going to set 
this spot as either my apoapsis or my periapsis. So I'm just going to put in just a, a pinch of retro. Uh, I'm going to fire the retro engines just for a just for a brief burst, just enough to give this exact spot that I'm at a marker. And that marker, it, it's a bit ahead of me. It's right there. But now you can see that my apoapsis is 399, my periapsis is 391. So that difference of about 8 kilometers is enough so that I now have a spot in my orbit where I can utilize to pick my rendezvous point. And that point is actually going to be my, um, it's going to be my apoapsis. So since the, uh, since the lunar wheel is pretty much in a circular orbit, I don't have to worry so much about what its altitude is at this exact spot. If the, if its PEA was like 400 and its APA was 500, that 100 kilometer, even if it was just like, even if it was just like a 10 or 20 kilometer difference, I would be very concerned about knowing what the altitude of the Luna wheel was at this spot. But since its orbit is, you know, only a difference of 300 meters, um, I know that if I raise my altitude at this point out to 500 kilometers, I'm going to be able to rendezvous with no problem. So now I'm going to go around to my periapsis. So I'm just going to warp time forward. And we're getting pretty close to that point. And I just want to raise the other side of my orbit to 500 kilometers. So let's get close to that point. So we're just about 30 seconds, but I'm in 10x time warp. So about right there, that's good enough. Now I'll start increasing the other side of my orbit out to 500 kilometers, and I'll try to make that as exact as possible. Rotation translation. And there we have it, 500 exactly, turn off prograde. Um, and once I, once the vessel comes back, uh, once the Luna wheel passes my apoapsis, I'll go ahead and check, but as long as it's, you know, I mean, again, we can tell, you know, the PEA is 499.9, apoapsis is 500.1, so it's a, at the moment, according to this information, there's only a 200 meter difference. It's not enough for me to worry about, but just to kind of verify that, uh, once the Luna wheel passes that point, I'll go ahead and check and see what its altitude is at that exact spot. And we're coming up on that spot. And there we are, so we go down to 0 0.1 for a moment, and we can see that its current altitude is 499.9, and my altitude at that point should be around 500. So I'll be within a few meters, a few dozen meters of the altitude. Okay, so now that we have uh, we, now that we're in plane with the Luna wheel and we have a target in our orbit around the moon picked, we, we're, we have a, a spot pinpoint and we're saying we want to we want to rendezvous at that spot and we're already in plane. So now the next issue is uh, timing. We want to make sure that when the Luna wheel passes that point that I've picked and we already know we're in plane and we already know we're at the right altitude, but we want to make sure that our vessels cross that point at the same time because it doesn't do us any good if we have all that other stuff figured out but the luna wheel passes five minutes before we get there that's way too much time difference so we'll quickly check our uh, sync orbit mfd again and we can see that in just a uh, a, a couple more orbits from now we're going to have this difference of 169.3 and I believe that's seconds so that and that's quite a bit so since we're coming up on our rendezvous point here in just 790 seconds I'm going to use uh, tr uh, our thrusters to adjust our DT min to bring that down to a lower number now if I plan this a little bit differently our DT min would have been much lower this is actually quite a bit but um, we'll, we'll go ahead and manage it anyway. So coming up on apoapsis, which is our rendezvous point, I can see there's some graphical glitching going on there. 
don't understand. Actually, I'm a little surprised that uh, Orbiter's still using D3, D9, which was ancient history with Orbiter 2010, <laughs> and it's still using D3, D9 all this, these years later. Uh, my computer's pretty good. I have an RTX 2080 in this computer, and yeah, I don't know where these, where these glitches are coming from. So anyway, as we approach our apoapsis, which we've defined as our rendezvous point, we're going to uh, want to make some adjustments here with our thrust to get the timing worked out. So I don't know which way I need to go, so I'm going to start with just a bit of forward translation. And that seems to be correct. So since I know that's working, I'm going to wait till I'm a little bit closer to the apoapsis, and then I'm just going to use a touch of main engine because this is this is quite a big number, relatively speaking. So let's get a bit closer. Let's say seven seconds and we'll put in a touch of main engine. That looks like that was a pretty good number to pick. Now we're past that and we're continuing to burn. And we'll finish this up with translation. Little tricky to get that one, even with control thrusters. So let me turn off the prograde autopilot. Let me go ahead and pause the simulation, switch camera views to the overlay, and I'm going to say that's going to be it for this part of the video. When we come back, we will complete the rendezvous and uh, try to complete the docking as well. If the video runs a bit long, we'll make docking a separate video. But that's going to be it for this part. If you like the video, please hit the like button down below, leave a comment, and I will see you in the next video.